online. Thank you for tuning in tonight. And I know we have some that uh, would like to be here, but could not because of circumstances. We certainly are thinking of you and we love you and we pray to be back to the next service. And those of you that maybe see this service and do not have a church home, I want to encourage you to consider Liberty Baptist Church as a possibility for you. Matthew chapter 17 tonight. I want to begin reading in verse number 14. And I'm going to read several verses, so if you would, just follow along. Matthew 17, beginning with verse number 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water, and I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and he, the child was cured from that very hour. And then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say to this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Now I want to get to my text verse, my main verse, so look at it carefully. Verse 21. How be it? This kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Jesus said, This kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Let's pray. Father God, I love you tonight. I want to be a blessing. Lord, I need your help. I, I need your thoughts tonight. Lord, my physical body is a little tired tonight. My mind is a little tired. It's, it's wandering a little bit. And I need your help to focus it on this message. I believe with all my heart, God, I've sought you, and this is the message I, I must preach. I must preach. So I must have your help to preach it. Please, please give me your power. Let us be spirit-filled hearers tonight. Lord, this message is for me. I need it. And I know our church needs it as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to preach tonight, and I've entitled the message for us, Going Deeper with God. Going Deeper with God. Every child of God has the awesome privilege of confessing the Word of God. Amen? This book is truth tonight. Amen? Amen. This is the precious, pure Word of God, and it has truth for us to live victoriously. And I don't know about you, but I, I want to live victoriously. Amen? Amen. Galatians 2.20, as you know, I've said it many times, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But so many believers are living life in such a way that they'll never see full growth. Did you hear what I just said tonight? So many of God's people are living life in such a way they'll never, ever see full growth. They'll never achieve victories God has for them because the, the Bible says, Jesus said, this kind cometh forth not but by prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. You see, Jesus taught many truths on the mount. Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7 are known as the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus brought the disciples, the disciples came unto him, I'd say he's he was set on the mountain, and they came unto him. And I believe there was a multitude there among them as well. And Jesus began to teach many things. He, he taught uh, how to be blessed. He taught uh, on giving. He taught on divorce. He taught on anger and prayer. And he taught on how to be a witness, how to, how to let this, uh, how to be a light, amen, to the world. He taught on giving. 
But there's one thing that Jesus taught that the church is guilty of not being faithful to. And that's fasting. Jesus taught on fasting. Um, take your Bibles and go to Matthew chapter 6. Or in chapter 16, uh, uh, 17. Go back to Matthew chapter 6. Would you please? Matthew chapter 6. And look with me in verse number 16. Matthew 6, 16 tonight. And the Bible says, notice this, Moreover, what's the next three words? When ye fast. It doesn't say if you fast. It says moreover when you fast. That's a command. Fasting, like praying, like Bible reading, like soul winning, like giving, uh, uh, giving up your tithes and offerings unto the Lord, is a ministry all God's children should get involved in. Fasting is just as much as important as Praying and reading your Bible is. Amen. Oh, yes. And it's a command. Moreover, when you fast. Not if you fast, but when you fast. It's not that fasting has power, but fasting is that obedient uh, servant of God, yielding to God, who has all power and wants to do great and mighty things. But he says, there's some things that come crisp by prayer and fasting. Hey, Peter, there's some things that you get by prayer and fasting. Hey, James and John, there's some things you get by prayer and fasting. You see, the man brought his son to the disciples because they had been doing miracles. God had given them power over unclean spirits. They had been in the ministry with the Lord Jesus Christ. But they left off one thing, and they and Jesus taught them. Because that's why that's why he said, well, I brought them to your disciples, these are your followers, and uh, I, I've heard that uh, you know they've done some things along with you, but... They couldn't help my son. And then later they said, why could we not do it? I mean, we've been able to do other things. Why can we not do this? This kind cometh but by prayer and fasting. See, the church is not whole tonight. The church is not whole. Most saved people have entered the realm of prayer. If I was to ask tonight, how many of you prayed this week? Hands would go up. Even if it's just an occasional prayer. Let's just, let's just back it up and say, have you prayed this month? Hands would go up. Probably every hand. I would hope so. As well as maybe giving an offering. Whether it was uh, your tithe or, or, or some, some, uh, some offering, you've given something to the Lord. But very few have ventured deep with God and entered the realm of fasting. Now tonight, it's important, and I'm preaching to myself, it's important that we go a little deeper. Go a little deeper. Just go a little deeper. Because, listen tonight, listen tonight, God says there's some things that come because you fast. You fast. Prayer and fasting. Now, I want you to take your Bibles and go to Isaiah 58. Amen. Are you with me tonight? Say amen. 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 All right. Now, listen. This is for all of us tonight in Isaiah 58. Now, now before we get there, you're turning to Isaiah 58. The word fast means, it simply means defined as the covered of mouth. Okay? It's the, it's the, it's the covered of mouth, the fast. And um, fasting is biblical. Very biblical. It's very important. It's mentioned often. It's in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And um, let me just say this. That it is to be done unto the Lord. I'm not fasting for you. I'm not, and you're not fasting for me. I'm fasting as unto the Lord. Just like why I read my Bible. Just like why I pray. As unto the Lord. It is a consecration of self. It is... It is saying, God, I'm willing to hold off some pleasures for you. Now, I understand there may be some tonight that may have health issues. You may be a diabetic or you may be uh, anemic or some other uh, thing that you have. That, that, uh, but let me say this. No matter what, we can all fast a little. We can all fast a little. And by the way, fasting doesn't have to be just food. Even though it does mean to cover one's mouth, it doesn't have to be just food. 
Sometimes husbands and wives could fast from one another. Uh, intimately, I'm talking about. Uh, uh, some, in another way, uh, there could be other things that you may be able to fast. Something that you take pleasure in that's a treat for you. That's something that you enjoy. And just say, God, I'm going to set that aside because I want to, and I want to get serious, and I want you to see, God, that I'm I'm serious about this thing that I'm praying about and pray about. I want you to look at Isaiah 58. And I want you to see this tonight. Now, Isaiah 58, read it on your own time, make it a devotional for yourself. But the whole chapter is about fasting. And we see, first of all, the wrong kind of fasting, because there is a wrong way to do it. Just like giving, there's a wrong way to give and a right way to give. God love with a cheerful giver. And uh, we're to give out with a cheerful heart and so forth. And uh, so is fasting to be done a specific way. In Isaiah 58, 6, we find God's chosen fast. And that's what I'm gonna, that's gonna be my message tonight. Isaiah 58, 6. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? So this is God's fast that He chose for His people. To loose the bands of the wicked of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke. Did you see that? So he gives us, God's chosen fast gives us four things. I'm going to give them to you. Four things. Loose the band of wickedness. Undo heavy burdens. Let the oppressed go free. And break every yoke. Break every yoke. Now let me, let me give you these uh, tonight. Break each one of them down. First of all, to break the band or to loose the band of wickedness. Take your Bibles and go to Proverbs chapter 5. Proverbs chapter 5. Would you please? Proverbs chapter 5. I, listen, I'm not saying tonight that you shouldn't have supper if you haven't had supper. I plan on having supper tonight myself. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that you should uh, starve yourself. I'm not saying that you should put yourself in a in a physical, harmful way. I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying tonight is that, listen, there is this thing called fasting, and the and the people of God, listen, it's not good. It wouldn't be good to leave off prayer tonight, would it? It wouldn't be good to leave off Bible reading, would it? It wouldn't be good to leave off soul winning, would it? Well, it's not. Well, listen. The same Jesus, the same God that taught those things on the Sermon on the Mount, taught fasting. Taught fasting. And that's the thing that the house of God, that, and Jesus said, hey, he said to the disciples, this kind cometh only but by prayer and fasting. When we are not fasting, we are limiting some things, some victories that we can have in our life. And I, I don't have time to give into all of it, but I'm going to give these, these four things tonight. Uh, Proverbs chapter 5. Let's look at verse 22. It says this, His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. Now listen tonight. We all have a sinful nature. And we've talked about that on Sunday. And I want you to understand tonight that, that listen, this old flesh, as I mentioned on Sunday, uh, it's, 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 I still got it. Amen? You still got it. It's not dead, and um, and uh, we have to be careful with it. And uh, if we're not careful, uh, it, it can it can overpower us from time to time if we allow it. And uh, there may be somebody tonight saying, Pastor, there's some things in my own flesh uh, that you, you used to uh, take enjoyment in, and I prayed about it and prayed about it and asked God to help me uh, to get victory. And it just doesn't seem like the victory is coming uh, like I uh, like it ought to. Well, let me ask you this. Have you prayed and fasted? Have you prayed and fasted? Jesus said this kind of cometh but by prayer and fasting. The son was a lunatic and they couldn't help it. But tonight, you may say, preacher, I'm just going crazy. This thing, I just can't get victory. Have you prayed and fasted about it? Are you listening tonight? Have you prayed and fasted? Um, you see, Jesus said there's some things that come by Fasting with the prayer. That's getting serious. That's saying, God, I'm willing to set aside some, some pleasures. I'm willing to set aside some things, some time, and just get serious and uh, and, and, 
and, and, to, and to concentrate myself, God, and, uh, uh, and just pray and, and, and take away uh, that moment of pleasure because I want you to give me victory in this area of my life. The band of wickedness. To loose the man. God said, I didn't say it. It's not my book. It's God's book. God said, listen, God said, this is my chosen fast. That when you fast, you fast to be loose from the bands of wickedness. If there's a sin tonight that's besetting you, that's holding you, that's, that's keeping you bound, I don't know what it is, whether it's uh, whether it's something that you watch that you shouldn't watch, or something you listen to that you just can't stop listening to it, whether it's gossip, or whether it's cussing, or whether it's whatever it is, uh, some, I don't know. I don't know what it is tonight. I don't know what your, where your eyes wander. I don't know where your ears wander. I know where mine go, and, uh, and, and that's bad enough. And I ask God to help me. And tonight I'm saying this. Listen, God says, I want to you be loose from it, but you need to pray and fast about that thing. Are you with me tonight? That's getting serious. That's saying, God, I really want victory. Look at the nugget number two. Not only the loose of the of the band of wickedness, okay, that 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 rope that ties <laughs> us up and holds us back and keeps us from being what God would will us to be, but to undo heavy burden. Undo First Peter 5, 7, don't turn there. First Peter 5, 7, cast it all your care upon him, for he what? Careth for, for you. you. Now that's a comforting verse tonight, amen? Casting. God, I'm casting this upon your shoulders, God. I can't carry it. Now that, look, I know tonight there's many burdens in Liberty Baptist Church. If I was to say, who has an unspoken prayer request? Raise your hand. Hands would go up, would they not? Burdens, heavy burdens that we bear. And can I say tonight, listen, I don't know if it's a wayward loved one or if it's a job situation or if it's a health concern. And you say, preacher, I prayed about it. I prayed about it. I called upon God. I, I, I've asked God. I've, I've tried to put it on his shoulders. But have you prayed and fasted about it? It's not my message. It's God's. And I'm saying tonight, God says, listen, God says, this is my chosen fast for you. Here's, here's four things that you should fast about. You should fast about the band of wickedness, those things that tied you up and, and, and have kept you bound for years of your Christian life. And God says you've prayed about it. It's time to pray and fast about it. God says you've got a heavy burden tonight. Okay, undo those burdens. God says you've prayed about it. Let's fast with that prayer. Amen. Amen. Let's pray and fast about that heavy burden. That heavy burden. Amen. God, I am so I'm so burdened about this thing that I'm going to set aside. Uh, I'm going to set aside uh, my coffee for a week, and I'm just going to seek Your face and pray. When I'm normally drinking that coffee, I'm going to be sipping the the honeydew of Thy precious Word and claiming it and saying, God, give me victory in this burden. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe you're going to skip some snacks. Maybe you're a snacker, and you're going to skip some snacks. Or maybe you're a... a, 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 a now, if you don't eat breakfast, fasting breakfast ain't, ain't, ain't doing no good, amen? I, I'm not a big breakfast eater, but I'm a lunch and supper. I'm a big-time supper eater. I love supper. So you know what? For me, it'd be fasting supper, amen? That's, that's because that's something I like. I really love to eat supper. I mean, you know, I, I'm on breakfast okay, lunch I can be busy and skip it, but boy, supper time, I'm ready to eat the cow. Amen? I mean, you know, it's time to get serious. And, uh, you know, uh, like me and my stepdad used to say when we worked at the um, lumber yard years ago, on Fridays we'd say, man, let's go kick back. Amen? That meant we were going to have some big time eating. Amen? Uh, we were going to go and eat. And, uh, you know, we'd clock out and we'd go in this restaurant. And, man, we'd get there as quick as we could. So I let him drive. Amen? <laughs> so we'd get there as quick as we could. Then we'd go in and, man, we'd kick back and eat big time on Friday. And, uh, but, you know, what I'm saying is this. I'm saying God may be speaking. To you. I don't know how God's speaking to your heart. But God may be speaking and say, listen, yeah, you prayed, you prayed, you prayed. But now choose my fast. Get into that. Let's go a little deeper with me. Go deeper with God. You've prayed about things. You you've uh, you read your Bible. You share your faith. You do these things. You give your tithes and offers to the Lord. Let's go a little deeper. Because there's some things, I'm just going to say it. I, and, and, and it may not settle well, but it's biblical and you can't deny it. There's some things that praying just can't give you. Amen. 
Because God said prayer and fasting to get this one. So God said, don't take it up with me. You take it up with God. God said pray and fasting to get you this. That's tough, but that's what God said. I can just testify tonight, I've never felt closer to God than the times when I'm fasting with God. I've never seen greater things and got greater victories in my life than the times when I was praying and fasting. And I'm not perfect at it. I, was, I wish I was better. God knows this message is for me tonight. But maybe it's just for you too. Because there's some things that, there's some things that, some burdens in your heart and you've been praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. And tonight God sends your preacher by to say, hey, pray and fast. See what God does. Amen. Pray and fast and see what Amen. God does. Number three, the first thing was loose the bands of wickedness. Number two was to undo the heavy burdens. God says, This is my chosen fast for you. And then number three, God says to free the oppressed. That is to let the oppressed go free. Uh, take your Bibles and go to Psalm 142. Psalm 142. Psalm 142. <coughs> Psalm 142. And look at verse number 4. Psalm 142. Verse 4. Boy, don't miss it. Don't miss this message. Look at what it says. It says, I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man. How many men? No man. No man. That would, that would know me. Uh, refuge failed me. And then let's read the last part together. Ready? No man cared for my soul. That is one of the saddest statements in all the Word of God. No man cared for my soul. The drunkard the people that he hangs around, he doesn't care for his soul. He's not going to warn him of a hell. Hollywood's not going to warn him of, a, of, of what these uh, sins that they push. They're not going to warn him the consequences. By the way, what's a God that when they made their commercials, they showed the truth? Instead of showing some, uh, some uh, healthy man or woman having the time of their life with alcohol and all that, why don't they show the broken homes pushing their alcohol? Amen. Show the children that are abused and scared to come out of their bedroom. Amen. Show the uh, the wives that are battered and and uh, and uh, bruised head to toe. Why don't why don't, why don't Budweiser put out a commercial like that? And Coors Light and whatever all the rest of it is. And not just alcohol, but all the things that are out there. Movies, Hollywood tries to portray loose living as being some great way of life. But we know it's not so. Amen? I hope you do. Amen. There is a way we're seeing right into the man, but the end thereof are the ways of death, right? Sure. The Bible says. Yeah. But notice what he says here. He says, no man care." For my soul, how sad that is. How sad is tonight that there are many that maybe feel like no one cared for my soul. I'm glad Jesus cares, amen? I'm glad Jesus cares. Now listen tonight, you say, preacher, I prayed. I prayed for my loved ones. I prayed for my neighbors. I cried unto God daily. I regularly, I call out their names. But have you cared enough to cover your mouth when it's supper time? Jesus said prayer and fasting, friend. Jesus said prayer and fasting. This kind comes on but by prayer and fasting. I'm not saying that we should, uh, uh, I'm saying, I'm not saying we need to fast tonight. I'm not saying you ought to fast tomorrow. But what I'm saying is there ought to come some times when we set aside and say, God, I'm serious about this thing. I'm serious about getting, uh, getting the oppressed free from, uh, from the bondage of sin. Enough to not just pray, but to pray and fast. And take away some pleasures from myself. 
that thou may know that I care. Praying and fasting. Jesus said, this kind cometh but by prayer and fasting. Boy, can I tell you something tonight? Fasting is one of the my least favorite things to do. Must be why God made it so important and said there's some things that don't come but by doing that. Praying and fasting. Mm -hmm. There's some things that you just won't get except you go a little deeper with me. Tonight, I don't know what those things are in your life. But I'm, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage myself Say, God, if there's something, if there's a victory there for me, I want it. Amen. I want to go a little deeper and get it. Amen. God, if, I'm, if I don't want to be three-fourths right, I want to be all right. right. Now, I'm not, God doesn't say we have to fast every day, thank God, or every week, thank God, or every month, but God says we ought to fast. He didn't say if you fast, He said when you fast. When you come in prayer, don't just come praying all the time. Come praying and fasting. Mm -hmm. Come having taken away some pleasure. Seeking my face. Mm -hmm. That I may hear. Mm -hmm. Oh, tonight may we get this message. And then let me say number four. Number four. And the last. And that is to break every yoke. To break every yoke. Um, take the Bible and go to Jeremiah chapter 34. Jeremiah chapter 34. Jeremiah chapter 34. I'm challenging myself tonight. I'm challenging myself. I'm challenging our church to go a little, a little further. I'm saying, Pastor, have you fasted over the church? Sunday school teacher, have you fasted over your class? Mama, have you fasted over your family, the cares of your family? Daddy, have you fasted over the care of the leadership at home? Teenager, have you fasted <clears throat> to be the teenager that prayed and fasted? Say, well, I pray. I say, God, help me. Okay, but have you prayed and fasted about it? Have you gone a little deeper? Have you gone a little deeper? Let's go a little deeper with God. Let's go a little deeper. Go a little further. Jeremiah chapter 34. You're there. Now, in Jeremiah chapter 34, uh, let's begin reading. Let's pick it up in verse 8. This is the word that came unto Jeremiah from the Lord. After that the king, Zedekiah, had made a covenant with all the people which were at Jerusalem to proclaim, notice this, liberty unto them, that every man should let his manservant and every man his maidservant, being in Hebrew or in Hebrews, go free, that none should serve himself of them, to wit, excuse me, of a Jew, his brother. And I want you to notice here, verse 10. Now when all the princes and all the people which had entered into the covenant heard that everyone should let his manservant and everyone his maidservant go free, that none should serve themselves of them any more. Then they obeyed and let them go. This is, of course, dealing with the freeing of servants or slaves. And uh, they were to serve for six years. And then on the seventh year of Jubilee, they were to release them, their, ser their, ser uh, their servants. But they were not doing that. They had not done that. And, uh, and so uh, it was made, declared, to let all of them, regardless of how many years of service to let them free. Break every yoke. I wonder tonight how many of us are holding yokes, holding people 
for things that we should uh, let go of. Let go of. Now, notice what it says here. It says that uh, verse number, uh, let me look here, verse number 10. Yeah. Then they obeyed and let them go. But notice verse 11. And this is exactly what we do. But afterward they turned and caused the servants and the handmaids whom they had let go free to return and brought them into subjection for servants and for handmaids. The very ones that they let go of their service, they brought them right back and made them slaves again. You know, that's what we do sometimes. I release you. I, I, I release you of service. I release you of service. I'm not going to hold you <coughs> to that thing anymore. It's okay. Let it go. Only something to come up and then we write back on it. Two hands. Holding them. Holding them. Trying to hold them to be our slave. We are servant. We grab a hold of them again. I'm glad Jesus didn't treat me like that. Amen. I'm glad when Jesus said, Forgiven! I was forgiven. Amen. Amen. Cleansed! I was cleansed. Amen. As far as the east is from the west. Never to be remembered no more. Amen. Tonight, you say, Preacher, I've tried. To release that yoke. I've prayed about it, preacher. I've prayed about it. Friend, have you prayed and fasted? Have you prayed and fasted? God's fast, not mine. God's fast, four things. Loose the band of wickedness. Is there something binding you tonight? Is there something that's got a hold on you? You've been trying for your whole Christian life to get victory. You've prayed about it. You've prayed about it. You've prayed about it. Pray and fast. Undo uh, some heavy burdens. There's something that's just got you burdened down. You've prayed. You've prayed about your spouse. Have you prayed and fasted about your spouse? You prayed about your kids? Have you prayed and fasted about your kids? You prayed about your finances? Have you prayed and fasted about your finances? You prayed about your health? Have you prayed and fasted about your health? Freeing the oppressed. Oh, those who are oppressed, they're pushed by the sins of the world. They're lost, they're undone, they're on the way to an eternal hell. You've prayed, you've prayed, and you've wept many tears that you prayed and fasted. That God may set you free. Break every yoke. I release you. But when we release them, don't be like the children of Israel. And that is bring them right back in and make them their slave again. No, I forgive you. I remove you. We'll take these four things personal and pray and fast. <coughs> I don't know what God will do. I don't know what victories God is up in heaven and saying, here it is, I'm ready to get it. I've got it, I'm ready to do it. Now I just, God gave me the message now, I, I, it's almost like he's saying, now, is the preacher going to do it? I, I, got, I, got, I, got, I got some victories right here. I'm, I'm going to dump them. Oh, but I'm going to wait because he's praying. But I want to see if he goes a little deeper. Sunday school teacher, boy, praying. I got some stuff. Oh, but I want to see if he goes a little deeper. Mama, I got some stuff, but what, 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 hang on, hang on, Gabe, hang on. I want to 
and see if they go to the people. Daddies, I've got some stuff. I got some victories. I got some big blessings, man. I've got some stuff to give you, buddy. But first, I want to see if you go a little deeper. Tonight, let's go a little deeper with our God. Go a little deeper with our God. Let's be willing to set aside some pleasures, temporal pleasures, for some eternal blessings. <coughs> Big things from the big one. They only come by prayer and fasting. Father God, I love you tonight. This is the message you gave me. And I thank you for helping me to preach it. Now, Lord, I need your help tonight. I have not done a great job with praying and fasting. There's been many times I've prayed about things that I've never fasted about. And I should have. I'm sorry. Lord Jesus, I've not done uh, due diligence in this thing of praying and fasting. But I pray tonight that you'll help me to do my part. And then, Lord, I believe with all my heart tonight there's some things that you want to do in the lives of the folks of Liberty Baptist Church. Lord, they've, they've, they've taken this journey with you. They've gone a long way. They've grown. Many of them have used to not tithe, and now they tithe. Or give anything, and now they're giving some. Never share their faith, now sharing their faith, some. Never read their Bible, now trying to read their Bible faithfully. They've, they've taken some good steps. They're trying to follow you. But I pray tonight, Lord, with your help, I pray that they'll go a little further. Go a little deeper. And enter the realm that very few Christians ever go. And that's the realm of praying and fasting. So that whatever is available, can be done. It can be, it can be received for your glory. I pray in Jesus' name. Would you stand, please, with your heads bowed?